The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Uh, we'll start out the show like we always do with the German DAX. As you can see, this is a long-term picture, and we are, again, hovering right at the 78% retracement. Of all the, the uh, not, well, not domestic, but all of the foreign stock markets that we watch, there are only two that have some bullishness. One is the German DAX and also the Nikkei, uh, Japanese Dow, both of those are at 78% retracements uh, as we uh, come into the market today. Now, I have a little Christmas story to tell you today, folks. I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, we have a three-year-old and a five-year-old grandson, and of course, they're really into the Star Wars, and so they have these saber swords that they use to fight, and they have their little Darth Vader and Stormtrooper masks. And so yesterday, the three-year-old was uh, fighting with his brother, who was sitting on my lap, the five-year-old, and they were whacking away, and the three-year-old really gets into it. I mean, he takes it so seriously. I mean, you won't believe how he goes after the five-year-old. And we were whacking away and whacking away, and this goes on for about 10 minutes. And finally, the five-year-old says, he said, hit him in the berries and the twig. He said, that'll stop him. And I swear to God, I laughed for 45 minutes. Uh, unfortunately, he didn't say berries and twigs. He used the actual vernacular that Trump would use. In other words, the P and the N word. And I laughed so hard, I, I just I just couldn't stand it. But it was quite funny, I thought. So I thought I'd share that with you. Anyway, it was very, very funny. And, and the kids, they had never seen me laugh that hard. And, you know, they're only three and five. But I was really laughing. And... Uh, I laughed for two days. I'm still laughing. <laughs> but anyway, um, it was it was rather funny. I asked him, I said, uh, where, where do you learn that stuff? He says, well, you know, I go to school. I'm five years old. And I said, oh, OK. So anyway, it was uh, rather funny for a five-year-old. They learn very, very quickly. OK, we'll move on to the next one here. We had a request from one of our listeners to talk a little bit about Bitcoin. And believe me, this will be as about as little as you're going to hear. I know little about this. Well, little is the understatement. You, what I knew about bit, Bitcoin, you could write on the head of a thimble or a pen uh, in boldface type. I don't know anything about it. All I know is that the relationship here is almost perfectly um, reversed of what happens to gold. In other words, as Bitco Bitcoin goes up, gold goes down. It has a high correlation. Whether this will ever catch on or not, I don't know. But I do have a friend in the UK that is heavily involved in this Bitcoin um, um, program, and uh, he has written a book about it, and I, I just don't understand it. I, first of all, when they try to uh, put money electronically, uh, it scares the heck out of me, and uh, that's what they're trying to do anyway, so we'll have to uh, to wait and see of what's going on, uh, what's going on. Actually, the berries, the berries and the twigs is a euphorism, of course, uh, for the uh, what we usually call the P and N. Okay, let's move on to the next one before Mr. O'Brien cuts me off. All right, let's take a look at the. Uh, we've had a request to talk a little bit about the um, the crude oil market here, and I wanted to just to show you where we are. We've had some pretty good movement here over the last. Uh, Three weeks, we're coming into some pretty nice uh, higher bottoms and higher tops. And uh, <laughs> yeah, you're right. I am enforcing bad behavior, I guess. But as you can see here uh, in the crude oil, we had that big move up that was the breakout uh, on uh, the 11th of December. Uh, right after that, of course, the market gave back uh, almost, well, four and a half to five, well, 5%. Uh, of the crude oil move and then we've since that time you've noticed we've had higher bottoms in here we had a higher bottom on the 8th and then we had another one on the 15th and another one on the 22nd all those are seven days apart and as you can see as we come in this morning at this 54 and change level 
uh, we are uh, uh, with a positive bias looking like we're ready uh, to go out. We really need to get it above that 54.80 for it to start to move higher, but uh, at least it's uh, following the number sequences uh, very uh, carefully. As you can see in the red boxes that we had marked there, uh, back on the 20th, that we had a 61% and a 78% retracement, you know, coming in, uh, you know, at the same time. So those are some of the things that you want to keep an eye out, you know, as you uh, watch as you watch this, uh, as this crude oil goes today. This is one of the um, slower weeks of the year. Uh, as you well know, we're also coming into the January effect, and that, you know, tells us that we're basically looking at what happened you know, in the market uh, during the first, uh, from the 23rd of December to January 3rd. Uh, usually there's a positive bias in the market by 1.3%. This is brought on by strength in the um, IWM or Russell 2000. In other words, the Russell 2000 will gain more than you get with the, um, with the Dow Jones. But the average gain is about 1.3%. So we'll watch that uh, you know, very, very closely as we come in here. This morning, as we come into the S&P, we'll take a quick look at this and just to show you what we're looking at because it is rather, the ranges are very tight now. We're in these five and 10 point ranges, but you'll notice here uh, since December the 15th, we've had several ABCD patterns complete. And what we're looking at now uh, today, there's a potential Gartley up there at that 2263 level. Uh, that's the ABCD pattern coming off of the 22nd. Remember, this is a 15-minute chart, so don't go switching over to weekly and monthly charts if you're putting this trade on. You're only looking for about 7 to 10 points on this with your risk factor being around 4 or, well, I'd say 5. And so you want a two-to-one risk-reward reward ratio with a positive expectation, which most Gartley, which most Gartley patterns usually have. Now, one other um, question that someone has posed uh, to us, and that is about what happened, you know, after Reagan, you know, took office back in uh, two th in 19 uh, in 1980, uh, he was elected and. Uh, inaugurated, of course. But if we we'll take a look here, what happened to the market during that time, you notice that we were in uh, an up market. You know, the market had finally taken out 1,000 in the Dow, and we got up to about 1,030, as you can see, uh, in March of uh, 1981. And from March of 1981 into August of 1982, the market dropped 30 percent. And as you'll notice there, if you'll look at that three drive to a bottom that occurred, um, the actual the daily chart on this is so clear with a three drive to a bottom pattern that I featured it in uh, my book Astro Cycles: The Trader's Viewpoint because it was coming in exactly at a 61% retracement coming off of the 1974 bottom uh, on August the 9th of 1982 with a perfect three drive to a bottom pattern just as uh, it couldn't have been any, it could have been more symmetrical if Picasso or Da Vinci had. Uh, you know, drew the pattern itself. So that's why these patterns, when they work, you know, they'll, they'll be watching really uh, at that time. Now, uh, Mr. Z's asking, is that Dow Jones, the real time in 1982, uh, actually, I was uh, on the floor of the exchange. Uh, actually, actually, Mr. Z, no, that was, uh, that was August the 9th, 1982. We started trading the S&P on August, excuse me, April the 16th of 1982. There was nobody in the pit. They had to pull us out of other pits to get our picture taken just to show that there were people in the pit. And um, so there was really very little. I'll cover that when we get back from the break. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed 
that has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN. FNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Okay, we're back, folks. And uh, we had a, someone had asked a question about the market bottoming in 1982 on August the 9th. We started trading on the 16th of April, 1982. The S&P, uh, it was trading. It came on the board at 103. Uh, the futures were trading at 101. They've always traded for, other than a few times, they've always traded at a slight discount uh, to the cash. In other words, if you buy the futures and hold it till expiration, it will come to the cash. Uh, the, the question is, if cash drops, uh, you're going to lose money. So you have to be able to protect yourself if you did a trade like that, which I do not recommend those kind of trades because that's a specialty trade that uh, you don't really need to uh, worry about. But that's when we started trading was in 1982. It wasn't until um, early 1983, about a year later, that we finally cleared above 1,100 in the Dow for the first time. And then we were off to the races, uh, which took us all the way up to 1987 on October, August the 25th, 1987, when we had the five-planet harmonic convergence, where we had five planets at zero degrees uh, in the sign of Leo. And then, of course, uh, three months later, we had the uh, largest crash uh, that we'd ever had in the market which was down 16% uh, in one day, and we were down over 50%, and we stopped exactly at the 61% retracement of that low from 1982, right to the tick. And since that time, we've been going higher, and we continue to go higher. Now, the next chart that I'm showing here is how the market has taken off because of the, the move in stocks has caused a move down in the bonds. As you can see, People are moving out of Treasury bonds, and they're putting their money in stocks at these at these levels here as the market breaks out, and they're listening to all the news. And believe me, to try to find a bear on Wall Street would be very, very difficult. 
so uh, it's very, very bullish as far as the uh, overall consensus of what's going on. I wanted to show that, the consensus, but before I do that, I wanted to show you the relationship here between the uh, Treasury bonds and also the high yield or junk bonds. And as you can see, this has gone uh, totally ballistic. This is uh, one of the widest spreads we've ever seen. This is basically telling you that people are leaving Treasury bonds and Treasury notes and putting their money uh, into these high yielding or as they're also called junk bonds. Now if we go back and take a quick look at what's happening with this uh, confidence index, in other words how people have changed you know, since the election. This comes from the Gallup poll. Uh, it's the economic conference uh, index and we'll put this up here so you folks can take a look at it. Uh, as you can see here, uh, since that 2013 high that we made, you'll notice that we are making a three drive to a pattern now. This is the highest this index has ever been in the history uh, since they've started taking it, since been back in the 50s. So it has never been this high. And as you can see, it has a lot of the ABCD patterns that we look at as we walk through this, I didn't put the ratios in because I assume you can see them, but you can see that the retracements uh, are at either 78% levels or 61% levels. And then you can easily see that three drive to a top pattern from 2013, 2015, and here we are in 2016. Now that doesn't mean this thing can't go a lot higher. All it's saying is that it's at a record level at a time when stocks have reached a you know very very high price so we'll watch this uh, very very uh, carefully now we've had a, a couple of questions about uh, over the holidays here uh, about the crude oil market and the fact that we had our um, good friend Bill Meridian from uh, Cycles Research in Vienna Austria talking about the oil market and the fact that uh, you know if we can break out above this fifty five dollar a barrel level you know, the next level would be at least 20% higher, which would take us up to the $65 barrel level, which would be a very, very uh, strong resistance level. Now, if we take a quick look here, this is another one that someone forwarded to us that looks really interesting. It's the long-term history uh, in the uh, oil market, and this shows you why it's such a great, uh, a great trading vehicle, because uh, you'll see that uh, we've had a really big uh, move here in some of these things uh, over the years. But some of the biggest ones, the one that's really most amazing to me is if you look at the chart at 1990 uh, when a Iraqi a, a invaded Kuwait right before the war, and uh, that market went from $40 to $11 uh, a barrel in oil. Uh, over a period of, of a year, and then from 11, it went to 130. So these are monster swings that we see in crude oil. I don't believe that this is going to change very soon. I know that the, the Tesla cars and some of the other electro electronic cars are doing okay, but we'll see uh, how these things uh, end up. But they do have some really wild swings that are going on. So we want to keep in mind that these are some of the things that we're watching. Uh, since we're on the uh, the crude oil, let's switch over for a second and just take a quick look at the heating oil contract. And you'll notice here that the uh, heating oil contract here also is making a three drive to a pattern here at this uh, $1.66 a gallon level. Uh, that's also a 61% retracement off of the May high. So both crude oil and heating oil have the same type of patterns that are very, very uh, very, very important to uh, to keep an eye on. Now, uh, last week we had a request from one of our listeners to talk a little bit about natural gas because uh, this was uh, what we were looking at at the time. The natural gas contract, as you can see, uh, when we were looking at it last Friday, uh, well, there's a Friday before the, before the uh, before the break. I was making a 382 retracement of the low from November. It was also testing the old high from October. Uh, and as you can see, we've exploded to the upside. We've gone from 335 uh, a cubic foot all the way up to 377 a cubic foot, and that's where we are today. We've actually taken out the highs of November. We haven't moved very much from that high, but we have been able to take it out. Whether this is going to be a double bottom or not, you know, remains to be seen. But this is one where you want to remember 
when you see old highs and market comes down to test those old highs, that can be a very, very good entry point. So especially when it lines up with some of the ratios that we look at, those are the key things to worry about are the patterns and the ratios. Those are the ones that we're going to be watching. We're coming up to a break here pretty soon. When we get back to that, we will start to uh, focus on the uh, gold and silver because I still think that there's a slight chance that we could have a, um, a good spot here in gold and silver. If you'll notice between uh, the last several days, all we did last night was uh, we had a nice $10 rally at one time when we got up to the $1,151 uh, uh, an ounce level. And then since that time, we backed off uh, about $10 an ounce, and now we're just setting at a 382 retracement of that uh, previous thing. So, you know, crude oil still is in a, excuse me, gold is certainly still in a, uh, a bearish scenario, but it has a chance uh, of turning in here at some time uh, very, very soon, I would think. But, you know, these are, these are things that we have to do is we have to make a assumption whether we're going to see whether these markets are going to uh, fulfill these patterns and ratios. And if they fail, you've got to stand aside because your first mistake teaches, your second mistake kills. And you don't want to go through that uh, the same thing. So that's mainly what we're watching. 877-927-6648. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. 
For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, we're back, and we are going to talk a little bit about the gold market here. As you can see, this long-term chart that we have on gold is uh, holding up pretty nicely. Uh, it looks like we could have a uh, pretty good move here uh, if we can hold this 78% uh, level that is down at the 1117 level. Now, uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to take a look at the platinum market here because, you know, that's a... Another way of looking, uh, we'll see what's uh, okay. <laughs> All right, there we go. You can see platinum here on the long-term weekly basis. Uh, you can see back in December, it was actually platinum bottomed in January of last year. So we're about a year out, and we're making a 78% retracement of that whole year's range uh, in the platinum that comes in here uh, at the 893 level. We're trading about $10 higher than that. But, you know, this is still very, very, uh, very, very quiet ranges, whether they're going to turn yet or not. You know, we'll have to we'll have to wait and see if that's uh, going to be the case. As we look around the globe here at some of the other markets, I mean, some of these markets look absolutely horrible, folks. Uh, just to take example, if you take a look at China, uh, what the uh, what the Chinese market looks like. I mean, it's just uh oh, hit the wrong button here. One second here get into the right place and you'll notice here that you know we had this uh, big gap down uh, later uh, earlier this last week and uh, we've uh, almost made the 78 percent retracement we're within about a point of that whether that's going to be a key thing to look at it and we'll be eight and see basically you know there are very very few people that are left that uh, have any interest in the long side of gold and silver at this level uh, it has been very good to us uh, this past year as you remember we were very bullish on this last December when we had the three drive to a bottom pattern uh, in the gold and the silver, and we got a $300 rally out of it. That rally stopped exactly at a 382 retracement of the high from the, uh, from the 1932 uh, per ounce that we hit in 2011. So that means we're still in this bear market, and believe me, anything below $1,100 uh, in the gold market would probably tell us that we are heading down uh, closer to 750 or 800 dollars uh, in the gold market. Now, the biggest question that most people ask is, you know, what is the stock market doing? Well, if you look at the patterns, we're seeing, you know, these massive 1.618 expansions just about uh, everywhere. Uh, that we see uh, in the market. I mean, if you just take a look at one of the ones that we look at, of course, which is the New York Stock Exchange Index. Uh, we're also, most of these look the same, and we'll take a look at these. Uh, you'll notice that we do have these uh, 1.618 expansions occurring in the NASDAQ. We have them occurring in the Dow Jones Industrial Average. But remember, the Dow Jones Industrial Average is really skewed by one stock, and that stock is Goldman Sachs. It is it is it of the of the sixteen eleven no was it sixteen hundred points that the Dow has moved since election night, um, twenty four percent of that is related to Goldman Sachs. I mean that's because it is a price weighted index. It's not cap weighted, and so that's the big difference. It's not a fair distribution of what stocks are doing. So you have to remember, even though it's the one that's most reported, you know, in the news, it's the Dow Jones, but it shouldn't be. They should be reporting either the S and P five hundred or the New York Stock Exchange Index. And believe me, that it's going to be a, a cold day in Hades before they allow them to do anything with that New York Stock Exchange Index. So that's pretty much what we're, what we're watching here. We just made the 61% uh, retracement here in the, uh, the uh, S&P uh, 500. So uh, keep an eye on that, that this is going to be really interesting how this uh, turns out. So it's very, very important uh, number uh, on some of these things that we've hit these long-term 1.618 levels. Uh, and this is true if you look at it also on the longer-term uh, chart with the uh, IWM. We'll just post this up here and let you take a look at it. You'll see again we hit that exact 1.618 number up there at that 139 level. 
And of course, none of these things have come down very much since that time, but uh, they still have reached that level. And we, we will be having some really wild volatility, I believe, you know, all through um, this next this coming year. Last year, we had virtually no volatility after the original drop. If we take a quick look here, just go back and we'll look at this stock market by using the uh, the movement that we've had in bonds. This shows you the whole year in advance. And what I'm going to do later on this week is I'm going to re go through the short, the, the really important things that happened, you know, last year. If you remember the January effect that we talked about, look what happened last year in January. The market started on January 4th and it basically went straight down into the 16th. If you remember, the January effect, as we, as uh, by the Hearst folks at the Stock Market Almanac, says it's from de December 31st to January the 4th. Well, on January the 4th, gold started up and stocks started down. And they went down into February the 16th. And uh, we had a big move there. And then we had a big move at the Brexit. You'll see there in June on the 27th. And then, of course, on election night, we had the biggest surprise of all. And that's basically been the whole market. And that's why the market was up 10% for the year, basically what happened uh, since the, uh, the election. And that's uh, been the whole thing. So it's very, 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 very interesting. Now, uh, the VIX index has been under a great deal of pressure again. And as you can see here, we'll pull this up and let you take a look at it. Because it uh, does, you know, you, just about the time everybody wants to get rid of the, the VIX index, you'll notice here that uh, it usually raises its head. But we've been here for basically uh, five years now. Since 2013, we've basically gone nowhere with the VIX. We've had some pretty big moves at times. They've doubled and tripled in price. And you can see that. 135 pattern that uh, was popularized by uh, Roy Longstreet and his son Bill, where you have the lower highs coming in at 78 or 61 percent retracements, and that's but what's been happening, and not much since that time. But you can see the high that we made back at 90, back in 2008, and uh, that was a big, uh, big move then. And of course, we had the too big to fail banks that were going and now the banks are just about ready to take over everything. So this will be interesting whether they bring back the Glass-Steagall Act or not. Now I wanted to focus on one particular chart from our good friend um, Priceline Charlie uh, out in La Paz, Mexico. I hope you're doing well, Charlie. We want to wish you a wonderful new year. But if you'll take a look at this Priceline chart, you want to see a chart that has some tremendous symmetry, uh, given the fact that it's trading at $1,590 an ounce as the high. Uh, but look at the number of days up in the move going back last year. You had 21 days up, and then you had a 78% retracement. Then you had another 28 days up, making a three drive to a top pattern. And then the market uh, broke almost in half. It gave back 50%. Then it went up for 96 days, backed off to uh, just about 61%, and then went up for 96 days when it topped uh, right around election night uh, it, at 96 days up. Now, this is, this is uh, what technical analysis really should look like, folks, because all you're looking at is numbers and patterns and putting them together. You're not actually looking at anything where you would be watching something would be uh, you know, really, really, uh, really, really crazy. So I noticed here that the S&P has gone above the 61% uh, retracement here this morning, and we're coming up to almost a 78% retracement, which is around the uh, 2266 level. That may or may not hold it. We'll wait and see. 877-927-6648. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. 
If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. It's 2016 and TFNN has a brand new programming lineup to kick things off. Starting January 4th, Swim Lessons by Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade will be airing five days a week at noon Eastern time. Join hosts Scott Connor, Kevin Hinks, and Cindy Faber as they host their daily options program live at noon five days a week with no commercials for the entire hour. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark will be moving their program, Living a Primal Lifestyle, to twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Wake up with Nico and Paige and start your day off right. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour by Nadex will now be live Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Start and end the week with the three hosts, Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien, and Daryl Martin as they break down the world of trading binary options and spreads. For all the details on the new 2016 programming lineup, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Catch the Money Masters as they teach you the art of mastering money when it comes to trading and investing. Next on TFNN. Okay, folks, we're going to take a look now at the U.S. dollar index uh, over the past uh, year. Uh, as you can see, when we started the year, uh, we were trading at around 99. We dropped about 10% uh, down to the 91 level. Uh, then we made that really nice 135 pattern between May and August, and then we've had the move up. Uh, we had, the, you can see there, during the election night, uh, we made a 61% retracement exactly off of the August low, that was one of the trigger mechanisms to make these stocks go crazy that night because it was the currency markets that actually turned first before the stocks did. Uh, many of you were, were not watching all night uh, the election, but uh, in the overnight trading, the Dow had its uh, worst day um, uh, on a percentage point basis. In other words, we, we dropped during the, the crash of uh, 1989, we were down 555 points, but remember the the, the market started at around 2,000 points uh, before, so this time we were down uh, 880 points in the uh, Dow futures, and of course they turned, and by the time you woke up in the morning and found that there was a new president-elect, uh, the market was actually uh, up on the day, and we've had one of the biggest runs we've had in a long time, and most of this was caused by the U.S. dollar. Now, the U.S. dollar has got some major resistance coming in here, folks, from going back a long way. We've got three major ratios. Uh, we got a 1.27, a 1.618, and 2.618, and a 1.27 all coming together at the same time at near this 10390 uh, level. Now, so far, uh, excuse me, 10360. That's been the high so far. We're trading at around 103 and change right now. So even though the euro looks like it has the kiss of death written all over it, that it wants to get down to that uh, level of a par, which it has a high probability of doing it. If you look at this this chart here in the euro, this is the uh, the daily chart in the euro. You're going to see a market that really is uh, wanting to head down to this level. Now, you notice over the last three or four days after we broke the 104 level, we've been going sideways. That is not bullish 
that is not bull bullish action, folks. That is uh, not bullish action at all. We'd like to see a little bit more of a rally. If we could get it up to that uh, 107 level, I'd certainly be interested in uh, selling it. And also, the 10570 level is going to be a tremendous resistance uh, in the euro because those are the old lows that we made back in November and December. And as we, we've said many times here, old lows and old highs – they act like magnets, and they have a tendency to pull the market up to that level. So it's better to be a short seller uh, in the euro as opposed to trying to pick a bottom here. This is one of the reasons why it's really difficult for gold and silver and platinum and copper or anything else you know, to get out of the way here because we've got a place where you know, these markets could uh, you know, be affected by the U.S. dollar because as the dollar gets stronger – it means that our products cost more in the world markets, and those are the ones that uh, you want to be, uh, you know, keeping uh, keeping an eye on as you as you see these things, you know, unfold, uh, you know, through the uh, the trading day as we go here. This now, I have had several questions uh, about the uh, market making twenty thousand. It could very easily do that. There's nothing magical about those numbers. Whether it's 9,000, 10,000, 11,000, 12,000, et cetera, et cetera, that really doesn't mean very much. What means to me is the fact that it's made these long term 1.618 ratios going back on the weekly charts, you know, from a long time ago. So those are the things that I think uh, are very important. But remember, I'm not doing anything with fundamentals here. I'm basically looking at the technical nature of the market and how it's reacting to numbers and patterns. And believe me, these patterns fail, but they work more than they fail and that's the that's the edge that you have if you're trying to do pattern recognition if you put the odds in your favor about two-thirds i mean that's a that's a tremendous advantage i mean no baseball player you know hits 66 percent so and no golfer wins 66 percent of the uh, uh of the tournaments so you know this is a really big advantage you know when we're when we're when we're watching these things so keep in mind that it's all based on probability it's not based on anything other than that, that's the real key, you know, to watching as we as we go through looking at some of these things uh, on a pattern basis. And I try to, you know, tell you that that's what I'm looking at. And believe me, folks, I I do not know anything about the fundamentals. I don't follow the earnings or any of that stuff. Uh, my options. Uh, my options expertise is very, very limited. Uh, I, you know, I go to a, a very small book by uh, Larry, Larry uh, Mc, uh, Mc, I can't remember his last name. Anyway, the the options guy. Uh, oh boy, that's my. Oh, I can't remember his name, but I'll remember it soon enough. Anyway, that's what we're watching here. Anyway, so remember, we're in the um, we're in the January effect now. That goes from January from December twenty third to January 4th. And remember last year, January, we started now. Whether that's going to be the case or not this year, we don't know, so we'll have to wait and see. But these numbers that people talk about uh, on the uh, on the stock market really mean nothing. If you remember when we hit Dow 10,000 the first time, that was a really big thing. Larry McMillan, thank you, Andrew. Yeah, Larry McMillan has wrote the best books on options that you can find. And I go to just his basic book and just try to find out one that looks – you know, really, really interesting to use, and that's what I'm. Uh, that's what I try, you know, to look at. So keep in mind that that's uh, that's what I know about it. But I do know the patterns. I do know the ratios. I do know the risk. I know when to stand aside, uh, and I know when to press it. So you know, we have a, a, a situation where we are looking at an outlier event. In other words, that means something that we've not seen before. Uh, in the markets in many, many years. We've never seen anything like this after an election where the market, you know, basically had a 20 percent move because, you know, we were basically down for the year and we ended the year. and We're not done with the year yet, of course. We've got to finish this week. But uh, it's really what we're looking at here is a pretty explosive market that is based on the anticipation that something good is going to happen. And that's most probably, you know, that's real money coming into the market. So, so people that are they're putting their money where their mouth is so they think that something big is going to happen whether it's going to be with taxes or uh you know some re relieving of some uh, regulations and stuff like that then that's what you're you know really looking at so those are the things that you want to look at this market could go to 21 or 22 or 23,000 in a doubt could certainly 
you know, you could certainly do that without any trouble at all. All I'm saying is it's going to have a little bit of trouble at these 1.618 levels, and that's, you know, right at 20,000 in the Dow. The other ones are not, the S&P, you know, they've already made those numbers. So that's what uh, that's what we're watching here uh, at that point. Okay, uh, so we've asked a question to, sh to show my uh, Dow, uh, my NASDAQ composite chart, and uh, we'll see that this one is at the uh, 1.27 level. Uh, give me, oh, dear. Here. Lost it again. One second, Mr. Z, and I'll get it up here. Here we go. Uh, we're still running on about three batteries here. There we go. You'll see the NASDAQ is making uh, the uh, – this is the big composite, of course. And as you can see, we're at the 1.27 level. We need this one to get above 55 Hundred that would really be uh, a breakout again on that one, but uh, this is another one that is completing some of these patterns. Remember, we have a really low volume day or all days this week, uh, Tuesday through Friday are going to, and Friday especially, because of the uh, hollow, hollow, uh, holidays. It's going to be really interesting, you know, to watch this uh, very closely. Eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, and uh, we were talking about gold and silver. 
and uh, they haven't bottomed yet, and it's probably related to the uh, U.S. dollar. That's the main thing that we're going to be watching here. Uh, the German DAX is still setting right at that 78% uh, level, which comes in at 11,500. Uh, the DAX is at 11,467 right now. Uh, we've got the Dow is up about uh, 40 points. We're only 22 points away from 22,000. And, folks, I really don't think that means a, a great deal. But, again, those numbers that we've had on the way up, um, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, meant very, very little. So uh, just keep an eye on the patterns. I think that would be the thing to watch as you uh, go through here and, and take a look at some of the things that we're watching. Um, the euro is the one that will be the uh, determining factor, I think, for 2017, because if we get below that 103 level, pars, the next stop, which is only 100, uh, you know, that's just three points, which is nothing in the euro, given these conditions that we have uh, in the market. And if the euro fails, the whole eurozone project, all, you know, 27 countries in the euro and 22 of them are pretty large. Uh, that means that we'd be going back to – they're not going to break up all at once, but they could start breaking up. You know, we've we've lost Britain. The next one could be Italy or uh, also the uh, uh, Greece – could also come in, but uh, and France, but uh, they'll they'll if they do, and I'm not saying that they will, but if they do, they'll probably, you know, go one time or another. We've had a request here to take a look at this British pound because we are at a, a very critical level here in the pound, uh, as we come in, and you'll notice here that uh, there's again you can see that that three drive to a pattern that we had back on the pre-Brexit, and now we're making a 78%, excuse me, a 61% retracement here uh, in the euro right where we're trading right now. So that should be some support, and it's down for almost a, a month. So, uh, well, actually three weeks. So it's taken three weeks to make a 61% retracement, which is different. Live every day in an attitude of gratitude, and may God bless. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.